Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about a new detection of a very unusual collision between two really massive and really compact objects. And one of them is a black hole, but the other one the scientists are not really sure about. They're actually not entirely certain what collided with what here. Let's talk about this and welcome to What Math. So if you were to tell scientists five years ago that we're going to be discussing the idea of black hole and neutron star collisions with so much frequency, most of them would be really shocked and surprised. But today it's a reality simply because of an incredible device known as LIGO. The gigantic device that's a few kilometers or a few miles in size that's able to detect minute oscillations of space-time itself and thus detect the gravitational waves from black hole and neutron star collisions. But even though the black hole collision itself is no longer really as exciting because there are so many of them happening pretty much every week, sometimes we detect unusual collisions. The biggest such unusual collision happened between two neutron stars and this actually was very big news a few years ago and the scientists really wanted to see what kind of light was produced when these two neutron stars collided. It allowed the scientists to clarify a lot of ideas and theories they had about black holes and neutron stars and of course about the creation of various materials in the universe. All of the previous videos on the channel have already touched on this, so today we're going to be actually talking about a new mystery that was just raised with a new detection from LIGO. Which is actually really strange because very recently, only a few months ago, LIGO detected this. This was a collision between a very unusual black hole and a much smaller black hole with the so-called asymmetric masses. Basically one was way way larger than the other. It did raise a lot of questions but in some sense it could be theoretically explained. What this allowed us to measure though is the actual harmonics of the black holes or the overtones of the actual space-time which then allowed the scientists to clarify a lot of different theories. But as strange as this collision was, the new detection is even stranger. We don't actually have any visualizations of this just yet, because it was just recently reported uh, a few weeks ago from when I'm making this video, but essentially what the scientists discovered and also reported on in a paper you can find it in the description below is the most asymmetric collision between two compact objects ever seen. One of the objects is about nine times more massive than the other, but what's really interesting is that the smaller object doesn't really make sense right now. And it doesn't make sense because it's in the so-called mass gap. The mass gap refers to the idea behind how different types of compact objects are created. For the most part, the origin of their story is usually the same. We have a very massive star like this one right here. Here's our sun for comparison. And this massive star one day becomes really unstable and goes supernova. What's left behind is either a neutron star or a black hole, depending on the mass of course. A more massive star will usually leave behind a black hole and a less massive star will normally produce a neutron star. And this neutron star can then either become a pulsar or magnetar or just remain a very quiet neutron star like most of them do. So here are the products of these uh, supernova. But when it comes to actual masses of these objects, the most massive neutron star we've found so far is about 2.14 masses of the sun. And despite the mass of 2.14 masses of the sun, here's how it compares to our own moon in size. So these are really small, really compact objects. When it comes to black holes, the smallest black hole we've discovered so far is roughly around 3.8 masses of the sun, although possibly a little bit bigger, we're not entirely 100% sure about this yet, but this is the black hole known as XTE J1650. And even though it's kind of impossible to define the size of a black hole, we can uh, talk about black hole sizes in terms of their event horizon. Here the event horizon makes it a little bit smaller in size than the typical neutron star, so it's slightly more compact. But in between these two masses, between 2.14 and 3.8, we've never really found anything and we've always referred to this as a kind of a mass gap. So we don't actually expect to find a lot of objects in masses between 2.5-ish masses of the sun and about 4 to 5 masses of the sun, simply because we don't really know how such objects would be created. But in one of the recent videos, I've talked about a new discovery that suggests that certain neutron stars, the more massive neutron stars, may actually possess cores of what's known as quarks, the matter that's very very different from any other matter we have here on the planet. And the so-called quark matter can even extend further, thus creating the mysterious and hypothetical quark stars. These really massive, really compact objects that are not exactly neutron stars and that are not exactly black holes 
but a kind of a transition stage between the two and essentially are made out of this extremely exotic matter that is very very difficult to produce here on Earth and could really only be produced either inside neutron stars or in the beginning of the universe during the Big Bang. And so these quark stars have always been a part of the physics, theoretical physics, but they've never really been proven, they've never really been shown to exist for sure. And the more we keep looking around, the more we find these unusual objects that are very difficult to explain except for if they were actual quark stars. And the best explanation for what the scientists just saw collide could be an actual quark star once again. With a mass of about 2.6 masses of the Sun, the scientists don't really know if this is the most massive neutron star ever or the tiniest black hole ever. And if it's either of the two, it's going to be extremely difficult to explain how it was actually created and how it was able to be captured by such a massive black hole. So the current easiest explanation does sort of relate to the quark stars that we've discussed in one of the previous videos a few weeks ago. These quark stars, if they do exist, would explain what happened here, they would explain the creation of this unusual star, and they might also be able to explain the creation story of this binary system that we just saw collide. Now, right now it's still a little bit too early to say exactly what this was, but the collision obviously created a lot of questions that scientists currently just can't really answer very easily. But one of the questions that they tried to answer is whether this was a neutron star collision. So as soon as they detected this, they actually asked a lot of other astronomers to try to take a look at this location with other telescopes in order to see if any light was produced during this collision for them to then analyze if this was a neutron star collision. The main difference between neutron star collisions and black hole collisions is that neutron stars will always produce a lot of a lot of light. They will always produce a lot of energy and this energy can be detected from really really far away. However, black hole collisions are normally relatively silent in uh, respect of visual light. They will not produce a lot of energy except for gravitational energy. And only a LIGO detector can then see them, not any telescope that's able to see uh, actual visual or x-ray or gamma ray light. But when they looked at this particular location, they didn't really see anything. So either because this collision happened just way, way too far away for us to see, this was about 780 million light years away from Earth, or because the collision was between a black hole and another black hole, or possibly some other unusual star that doesn't produce the same effects like neutron stars do, such as, once again, a quark star. We don't really know what would happen if a quark star collided with a black hole, and currently there are not a lot of theories that investigate this in more detail. But chances are a quark star and a black hole collision will not actually produce as much visual gamma ray or x-ray light and will instead be more or less silent as well. And in case of this particular collision, we know that approximately 0.6 masses of the Sun was released as gravitational energy and the rest of the energy actually created a new black hole that was about 25 masses of the Sun in mass. So, since no light was detected from this particular collision, we're not entirely sure how to answer the question of what collided with what. Although the bigger object was most likely a black hole, there's almost no doubt about it. It's just we're not sure what collided with a black hole yet. And if you actually want to check out the paper that talks about how the visual light was not detected from this event, I'm also posting this in the description below as well. This was one of the most comprehensive light searches that has been completed so far, and it was extremely accurate. And during their observations, they actually discovered pretty much nothing at all. Suggesting a few things, one of them could be that maybe the black hole swallowed the neutron star completely. In other words, because the black hole was so much more massive and so much larger, it just kind of covered the entire object and it ended up swallowing the entire object without any traces left. Although there is no way for us to prove or disprove this just now. But as of right now, there are just no good explanations to what we observed or what we actually did not see. Technically, if this was a neutron star, there would be at least some light produced. And even though it was pretty far away, we would have seen at least something. At least that's what the scientists, some scientists think. However, due to the lack of light and also due to the sheer mass of this unusual second object, there's going to be a lot more investigation going on in the future, just trying to figure out what exactly this was, and if this was some sort of a quark star, or possibly some other unusual object we've just never really thought about before. Maybe this is a completely new exotic object that needs an entirely new theory and an entirely new field of physics to try to explain its existence. Current physics does not really explain what this is and how it was possible. At least not to the extent where most scientists would be comfortable. 
For now, it's basically yet another mystery of the universe and something we're going to come back and talk about in one of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Consider supporting this channel on Patreon, it does help me quite a lot. But either way, I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.